Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this video. Um, I am a little under the weather today, so this is like as loud as I'm going to be. I know people have told me I have to speak up, but bear with me. I really wanted to get this video done. This research took a while. Um, I was on a roll and had a whole bunch of stuff done for research and then kind of hit like a snag. Um, with the holidays and now that they're all done and over with for a while hopefully i'll be able to crank out more videos for everyone on my channel um but anyway today's video is going to be about morgan nick she has been missing since 1995 and arkansas is going to be the state that we are covering today in our somebody someone saturday video for every state that somebody is missing um so without further ado let's get into it Cue the intro. Warning. The following content may be considered disturbing or unsettling to certain viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is meant for informative purposes only. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year. This is just one of them. Morgan Nick was born September 12, 1988, and she was six years old when she disappeared. At the making of this video, she's been missing for 26 years. She was born in Ozark, Arkansas, and on the night of June 9, 1995, Morgan was at a Little League baseball game in a city called Alma in Arkansas. And she was with her mom, Colleen, and around 10.30 p.m., Morgan asked Colleen if she could go play with her friends and they wanted to catch lightning bugs. And originally Colleen said no. And then finally she gave in and said, okay, fine, go play with your friends. So then Morgan Nick was last seen around a quarter to 11, around 10.45 p.m. Um, by her friends as she was actually emptying out the sand from her shoes. Um, and she was alone and she was near her mom's car actually when she was doing this and her friends were just a little bit of a distance away and Morgan was actually only 50 yards away from her mom when she was kidnapped. Her friends did say that they saw a creepy man um, talking to Morgan. They were actually talking to all the kids and then he went over to Morgan um, and started talking to her and she was putting her shoes back on. And her friends told Colleen that she was at the car. And then when Colleen went over to the car, she wasn't there anymore. Morgan was actually gone. So actually Morgan has not been heard from or seen since actually. Um, no confirmed sightings of Morgan since that night, June 9th, 1995. According to witness accounts, though, a man was seen watching Morgan and her friends play and they were playing on the field earlier during the day, I guess playing like during the baseball game. They were doing their game and people saw that this man was staring at the children and the creepy man apparently went up to the children and asked them some questions. And then the investigation and the investigators on Morgan's case have actually never revealed the details on what the kids said that the man had actually asked them. He was described as being between 23 to 38 years old at the time. And he was about six feet tall and about 180 pounds. And he had black salt and pepper hair, um, which is like black with like a little bit of gray or a lot of gray with a little bit of black in it. My grandma had salt and pepper hair. Um, and it was combed back and it was kind of curly. They reported that it could be possibly kind of curly. He had also had a mustache and his beard was thought to be about three to four days old at the time. And he had a hairy chest. Um, and they said that they also looked the whole area for Morgan and they couldn't find anything. They searched all night for her and they couldn't find her. The man that was seen talking to the children was also um, wearing cut off blue jeans and didn't have a shirt or shoes on. And this is what I read online, so don't come for me for telling anybody dogs, but they said that he had a hillbilly accent. So take that what you will. There is a possibility actually that he had been driving a red Ford pickup truck and it had a white camper shell on it. So it was like 
the truck and then the camper on top of that. And he left the field actually around the same time that Morgan was reported last seen. So when she was last um, seen, he left around that same time. And the paint on the truck appeared to be pretty old and kind of worn down. And he, it's also a possibility that there was some damage done to the right rear end of the truck. People, like I said, searched all night for Morgan and they didn't find anything. And then the investigators eventually learned that the truck had actually ended up in a home video shot by somebody at the field, probably just recording their kid playing baseball. And then they didn't realize it, but then this truck was in the background and that was of the person that is suspected to have maybe taken Morgan. And it is pretty unfortunate in the video though, you can't see the driver. So you don't have a description of the driver. You just have a description of the man that was seen talking to Morgan the last time she was seen in Arkansas. On June 9th and 10th, there were actually two attempted abductions. In Alma, someone matching the description of the man last seen talking to Morgan was um, trying to get a four-year-old, actually, a four-year-old into his truck, and the attempted kidnapping was actually stopped when the little girl's mom saw what was happening and screamed and just was able to save her kid. In a town called Fort Smith, which is about 15 miles away from um, Alma, someone also tried to get a nine-year-old into the men's bathroom in a convenience store, but the kid fought back. So good on them. Good on them for fighting back and doing what it took to not get taken into that bathroom. The um, abduction was stopped. They attempted abduction, sorry, into the men's bathroom was stopped when the kids screamed and fought back and the um, police do think that it was the same man responsible for both uh, attempted abductions on June 9th and June 10th. Although the man in those issues hadn't been positively identified as the man that had taken Morgan, um, the description in the truck both match. In 1996, Colleen Nick actually formed the Morgan Nick Foundation, and it helps parents of missing children cope, and it helps others from going missing. And we'll touch more into the Morgan Nick Foundation as we go throughout our video. She has actually been a true pioneer in dealing with the prevention and education and reunification of families and their children. And it's truly amazing what her foundation has done. She took something terrible and is using it to educate people on how they can keep their kids safe and how we can keep ourselves safe. You know, just not just children, but adults too. Um, and it's truly amazing. It's kind of like what John Walsh did when his son Adam was kidnapped and then eventually murdered. You know, you, when you have something so traumatic and you find it within you, to go on every single day. I think that's amazing. And then when you use your traumatic experience to help others, that it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a terrible thing that somebody would have to go through something like that. Um, but it's a beautiful thing when you can help somebody else. And I, I just, I think that's amazing. Anyway, Colleen has been quoted saying, someday I want to be able to look Morgan in the eye and say, I always knew that I would find you. I have always said and believed you would come home. It's kind of a, a loose, a loose quote. Now we have a little bit of a timeline of things that we will touch on. So on June 9th, 1996, it has actually been an official one year since Morgan was kidnapped. And there was a ceremony held with pink balloons and they released those balloons in honor of Morgan Nick. Five years later, on January 4th, 2001, the police released a new sketch of the man suspected of kidnapping Morgan. And in February of the same year, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children um, also released a picture of what Morgan might look like at age 12. So they did a age progressed photo of Morgan and released that to the public. In August of 2001, Unsolved Mysteries did a segment featuring Morgan's story. And in 2009, Arkansas police actually changed their notification system 
and they um, included speed notification alerts. In November of 2010, November 16th, 2010, the police searched a resident on North, a resident, sorry, on Northwest 9th Street in Spiro, Oklahoma, and then they actually searched that home again seven years later. In August of the same year, Nancy Grace classified Morgan's case as a cold case. She called it a cold case when everything else that I've read has never called Morgan's case a cold case. Um, just a little fact that I was reading. Um, so she's on her show and she's talking about Morgan calling it a cold case. But like I said, everything that I've read, it, Morgan's case technically isn't a cold case. And we'll get into that more later in the video as to why I think that they don't classify it as a cold case. And then in August, I'm sorry. Um, yes, in August of 2005, actually, John Walsh was on an episode of Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Do you guys remember that show? They would take people that had gone through terrible things and would fix up their homes and they'd send them on a wonderful trip for a week. And then when they came back, they had a beautiful brand new home. Well, Colleen and her other two children were featured on the show and their water heater exploded in their home. And it like, it caused so much damage. It just about ruined their house. And so John Wash was on the show and he featured um, missing children. And it was, it's a beautiful episode. It's, it's really, really sad. It was actually at the 10 year anniversary of Morgan going missing that they um, were at her house doing the, the renovations. And their story included actually leaving the porch light on, which is a thing that I was reading about. And actually they mentioned it in the episode. Um, where those who have somebody missing, you leave your porch light on. You leave your porch light on and it just kind of lights the way for them to maybe find their way home, find their way back to you. In June of 2012, a woman named Tanya Smith, she was 24 years old at the time, was actually arrested for allegedly trying to steal Morgan's identity. She was trying to get lots of documents, documents pertaining to Morgan, um, including her birth certificate. So she was trying to steal Morgan's identity and it wasn't just like stealing her identity. She wanted to get her birth certificate, which is so weird. That's so strange. Anyway, on December 18th, 2017, the FBI and the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations and also local authorities were sent to a possible crime scene in Spiro. That's the place that we mentioned before. After they received a tip from someone who said that they knew what happened to Morgan and had information regarding Morgan and her case. They searched a well in the backyard as well as many other spaces in the backyard. So I'm assuming they just like tore up like the whole backyard and really looked in this well where they were told to look. And they searched for 10 hours. They didn't find anything. And then the next day on December 19th, the search was called off. It has been almost 27 years since Morgan was kidnapped and leads still porn. So this is why I don't think that they classify it as a cold case because they have leads coming in all the time and they have information and they, I think, you know, they keep Colleen pretty much in the loop with everything. So they, like I said, it has been almost 27 years since she's been gone and her case is still in the public eye. It's still there and it's still being investigated on a local as well as a federal level. A man named Billy Jack Lynx is being investigated in Morgan's case, and FBI agents are trying to find out as much information about this man as possible. They do know that he was born in Crawford County, Arkansas, and was in the Army during World War II. He lived in Texas from 1962 to 1974 and moved back to Arkansas into a city called Van Buren, Van Buren in the 1970s. Um, and then, I don't think I mentioned this, but when Morgan went missing, Colleen moved her whole family to Alma. So when they did the Extreme Makeover Home Edition episode, they actually were in Alma um, and not the original town where uh, Morgan was from, Arc, uh, Ozark. So anyway, they also knew that after two months later, when Morgan went missing, after two months after she went missing, Billy Jack Lynx tried to kidnap a young girl in, in Van Buren at a place eight miles away from the Wofford baseball field where Morgan was last seen. 
However, Billy Jack Lynx actually died in prison in 2000. So anything that he knew about Morgan, if he was involved at all, um, he took with him. He took with him when he died. Colleen has never stopped looking for Morgan. She keeps her name and her face out there as much as she can. And according to the Morgan Nick Foundation and their website, there was a $60,000 reward for Morgan, the recovery of her and identification, arrest and conviction of the person or people responsible for Morgan's kidnapping. Over the years, there have been a ton of sightings of Morgan all over the United States. And because of this, her parents think that she is still alive. So once again, I don't think this would be considered a cold case because people have reported seeing Morgan. Now it's tricky because she hasn't been heard from or seen from since she went missing in 1995, but people call in and say that somebody that looks like her, they've seen her X, Y, and Z, and they've seen her here and they've seen her there. And they just really, really hope that Morgan will be able to come home one day and that enough information will come forward and they'll be able to have her home with them again and their family will be reunited. The Morgan Nick Foundation was formed in 1996 with the intent to reduce the number of children abductions in the future. And because of that, in order to do that, we must educate our own children and empower them with the skills necessary to protect them from the possible dangers of abduction. We can make a difference one child at a time. That's one of the statements on the Morgan Nick Foundation website. The Morgan Nick Foundation was formed in 1996 with the intent to reduce the number of child abductions in the future. In order to do so, loosely quoted, we must educate our children and empower them with the skills necessary to protect them from the possible dangers of abduction. We can make a difference one child at a time. Their mission statement is dedicated to preventing crimes against children and adults through programs that educate, empower, and unite family and communities. Their vision is to be an organization recognized by the general public and law enforcement as a leading resource in the prevention of missing and exploited children, as well as a source for family crisis management when a child is missing. Their values, the rights of children and families and a safe environment for children. When Morgan Nick disappeared, she was four feet tall and she was about 55 pounds. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and Morgan also had five visible caps, silver caps on her molars and was last seen wearing a green Girl Scout t-shirt, blue denim shorts, and white tennis shoes. If you have any information regarding the case of Morgan Nick, please feel free to reach out to the Alma Police Department at 479-632-3333 or the Morgan Nick Foundation. There's also a PO box, so I will um, put that in the description box below. The Morgan Nick Foundation's phone number, 479-632-6382, or there were two numbers listed on the Morgan Nick Foundation website, 1-877-543-4673. Or, as always, you can call your own local law enforcement agency, I'm sure that would be fine and then they could give you more information and also please you can also call the national center for missing and exploited children at 1-800-THE-LOST 800-843-5678 as always thank you guys so much for watching thank you for taking the time out to watch this video i hope it reaches you and i hope that one day every single missing person and their families can have closure the closure that they deserve Keep an eye out. You never know what you can see or any detail, no matter how small or insignificant you think it might be, could actually be the answer that the police and the families are looking for. And remember, we are all somebody's someone. Thank you for watching. See you next time.